good evening today's class we are going to see about unit 3 how to um, write a planning appropriately right uh, as you all know or most of you may have gone through questions or past paper questions or you would have uh, sat for examinations you would know what is expected of you or what are the type of questions they ask for you when you are expected to write a planning for an experiment okay. today I'm just focusing on it it is very important or the key uh, focus in any unit 3 uh, paper because it is like around you 13 to 17 marks you could easily score out of that 50 so which is very important I would uh, I would advise follow these tips and try to secure the complete marks in that particular uh, question all right <clears throat> now I've written a couple of uh, like four or five um, key terms you are expected to use it even if you do not know the meaning of it or if you have not understood it completely I would say just try to use it you know in a sentence um, you would definitely score or if you miss out on this you may uh, lose marks unnecessarily all right so remember these key terms and try to frame a meaningful sentence I'm sure uh, you would uh, secure good marks all right <clears throat> now let's see uh, where would you include precision and range if you notice almost all planning you must write about the appropriate instrument that you would choose for uh, measurements right um, say if you take the simplest of uh, the experiments like Ohm's law if you take what are the quantities usually you keep it as variables you would have the current and the potential difference so you need two meters to measure it so if you just write I would choose a voltmeter for measuring potential difference and an ammeter for measuring current you might be thinking you have given the complete information and you will secure full mark but at AS level that would have been accepted for IGCSE but at AS level they expect you to choose the appropriate instrument the term appropriate stand there is a meaning to it which means they are expecting you to write the range the precision of the instrument that uh, you're going to choose because ammeters as you know you have digital ammeters you have got um, milliammeter you can use a normal ammeter which records uh, readings in amperes or the maximum reading is up till milliampere similarly so voltmeters also there are you, you could measure it in um, millivolt or uh, so and so so you must mention in what precision are you going which means precision in other words is the least count the smallest reading that you're going to measure in a particular uh, using a particular instrument must be mentioned in the planning all right now how do you choose that how do you make sure or which kind of instrument would be appropriate you have to think about the maximum range that you're going to measure in a particular instrument uh, experiment sorry now if you're using as I said Ohm's law you might vary the voltage in uh, steps of 2 volt right and you all know the power supply usually is in a range of 0 to 12 so you would choose a range of 15 volt uh, 0 to 15 volt voltmeter that would be ideal so if you take steps of 2 volt you can easily take like um, 6 to 7 readings all right or 1.5 or so but then you are mentioning the read, uh, range that 0 to 15 volt you will be using for measuring voltage in that particular experiment now since it's in the laboratory usually the current may not be in amperes because for two reasons one the supply will not give that high a current for safety reasons it will be in uh, milliamperes uh, and also you know the components or the, uh, the component that you use or the power supply that you use will be uh, will require very low current so reading through the experiment it you will uh, as i said for ohm's law you would be using a milliameter right you could choose a range from 0 to 50 milliamperes would be an ideal one so you will write 0 0.1 milliamperes as your precision so what would be the precision for the voltmeter 0 0.1 volt for ohms, ohms law and 0 0.1 milliamperes for the current okay so as i said earlier if you just leave it choose an ammeter and voltmeter the information is incomplete you must write about precision of or the least count of the instrument that you choose right now if possible you will write the range as well as I told you if uh, the maximum reading is known through the experiment then you can also mention the range if not 
this you can omit but precision of the instrument is compulsory for you to write it down now sometimes they ask why would this precision is chosen then how would you justify this is what i was telling you earlier even if you're not sure of what is the meaning try to include the low, lower precision or the correct apt precision when you take then your uncertainty will be very low uncertainty meaning the error the possible error or unavoidable error in a reading would be as low as possible for example in this uh, if your if your highest reading is one amperes and if you have just taken on ammeter then the uncertainty will be very high all right but if you take milliameters then the uncertainty will be very low so you can write add a sentence saying that i chose this because the uncertainty of the experiment will be low so you can justify that as well now these two will be uh, coming under the section where you're going to analyze or they'll ask you how would you uh, how do you um, analyze the data that you have obtained so you've taken the readings after that how do you proceed now for that first you need to identify which is the independent variable which is the dependent variable now this also most of the students get confused why should this be independent why should not the other quantity be independent all right there is no fixed uh, if there is any formula like hooke's law if you take there is no fixed condition the load has to be uh, the independent variable or the extension has to be an independent variable but based on the practical difficulty you will choose the one on the x axis or the independent variable which is in your control so when i say the term control the one which is easily controllable or one you can easily vary in steps that will be your independent variable if you take hooke's law why do we keep the load the load is easy for you to increase it in equal intervals if you take 100 grams then you easily it's available 200 gram 300 grams and so on all right if it is vice versa if you're keeping the extension to be to get it in equal intervals it's very practically it's very difficult for you to keep the corresponding load so keep this is an example i have given you so if there is any new experiment that's given then think about the practical possibility which would be easy for you to control and increase it in equal uh, intervals that will be the independent variable the other quantity will be the dependent variable all right now here one more along with this you should also know about the controlled variables which means in any experiment you may have other quantities that could also vary during the experiment for example again ohm's law when you take current and voltage when you are taking the temperature of these components the current carrying conductors like the wire connecting wires may get heated up right then the temperature will not be constant will that affect your reading yes it will so those variables which will have an impact on your dependent and independent variable must be kept constant i repeat so i've given you one example like this identify different uh, variables that could affect these two readings that must be kept constant all right so that also they will uh, look at how you have taken measures because these are these are all coming under experimental techniques whether you are sure of how to conduct conduct an experiment appropriately and get a valid result all right so think about the variables that could affect the readings and give uh, so how do you maintain this constant temperature in uh, ohm's law by turning it on or off on and off in between readings making sure that the components have reached room temperature and then proceed all right so that is like so you have taken the measures you know you have given an indication that temperature will affect these readings and you have taken measures to keep the vari that variable constant okay so you have controlled that effect effect of the variable then all right with that i'll come to the analysis in a bit let me i'll finish off this now what are random and systematic errors all right now here also when you are writing about uh, precautions or to conduct the experiment as i said earlier uh, to obtain accurate results you have to make sure that the random and systematic errors are kept to the minimum uh, of, so to keep to the minimum first what you should do you should be able to identify 
what causes this random error and what causes the systematic error in that particular experiment. Now, what are random errors? As the name says, it's just random. Sometimes uh, at that particular reading, you have not, you know, something has slipped or uh, for whatsoever reason, one reading has gone off the pattern. So you, have, you obviously know it is an um, anomalous reading that has occurred. Now that is called as random error. Okay. What is systematic error? As the name said, systematic. So throughout the experiment, there is some error that has occurred. So how do you identify that? By just looking at the readings, you won't come uh, to a you will not be in a position to come to a conclusion whether there is a systematic error or not. Only a graphical representation will tell you whether there is a systematic error or not. Okay. I'll give you an example. Say you've plotted a graph and you have the readings or the points lie so that have like almost three plus two five points they're almost joining then you have one reading of so you can see that there is a pattern of these points but one point is totally off the uh, of the set of readings that you have plotted which means this is a random reading so that's a random error which you can you will not be able to uh, analyze or tell at that point in time because you have completed the experiment you have plotted the graph it's when you're identifying the reading so it's not possible to rectify at that point in time all right but then how do you reduce that so you have to force you all this before beforehand so what we usually do is if you just take one set of readings you will you will have to rely on that right so you have to take multiple readings minimum of two so we say repeated readings and then take average so when you do that this will be reduced the random error will be reduced right so take repeated readings and take average that will reduce random error so that sentence keep it in mind key term is random error how do you reduce it repeat reading and take average that will reduce random error now systematic error from the graph you can easily identify if say you have an x quantity here in y if you are sure that these two quantities are proportional to each other, which means say uh, like B and I, if you are plotting it for a uh, re fixed resistor, then X should be proportional to Y, right? Then what kind of graph should be obtained? It should pass through the origin. So if you notice, if I draw a line of best fit, then it passes through almost in the middle. And see, it is having a Y intercept, right? The expected graph is what it should be passing through the origin and it should get a straight line okay that's the expected graph but then you when you are connecting when you're drawing a line of best fit it is not passing through the origin so what would the reason for this now here if you note every single reading has shifted by almost a same amount from the actual reading this this kind of error we call that a systematic error which means all, almost all the readings have an error in it that could have happened if you think probably you have not checked check the zero error of any particular instrument say uh, say the uh, ammeter had got got a uh, 0.1 or milliamp uh, um, uh, starting point was that so you had not paid attention to that start reading so you have a zero error there right so that zero error will be there throughout that's called systematic error so yeah you could identify from a graph by plotting a graph and then analyzing it you'll be able to identify but then how can you reduce it or prevent it you have to check for zero error all right that's one possibility one more possibility is there like Hooke's law if you're doing or any other experiment where the reading that you are measuring is not at your eye level if it is above or below or a meter the pointer is not in line with your uh, vision then there is a possibility that there is an error in that reading if you're taking it at an angle to the reading or if you're above or below again at an angle if you're taking the reading then you will not get the accurate answer so that probably had been you know um, coming uh, means as affected all readings so that we call it as you may be familiar that's parallax error okay so what are the causes of systematic error it is zero error 
and parallax error. So these two, if you check or if you prevent, then you are reducing systematic errors, all right? So keep the two, I hope you would have understood what are random errors, what are systematic errors, and how to reduce it or how to prevent it could be done by taking these measurement measures. So you must mention all this in your planning, all right? Now safety measures, I cannot tell you like there, there isn't any standards uh, safety measure. It depends, it varies for uh, experiment to experiment, but all those eight core practicals, just go through the points, you know, for each individual uh, practical, what could be the safety measure. For example, acceleration due to gravity, if you're dropping a metal bob, you catch it on a, a sand tree, so your feet is uh, protected, or you wear uh, thick uh, foot cover and so on and so. Then Young's model is you wear safety goggles, if the wire snaps, your eye is protected. Then for uh, heat experiments, keep the, oh, sorry, mm, yeah, heat experiments, wear gloves, etc. So like that for each experiment, you can also uh, mention about the safety measures, all right? I'll continue in the second part where I'll explain about how would you relate a straight line with the given equation. That's also very important in a planning. See you then, bye.